Skiing has an ancient history. The birth of modern downhill skiing is often dated back to the 1850s when Norwegian ski legend Sandre Norheim popularized skis with curved sides, bindings with stiff heel bands made of willow, as well as the telemark. Skiing can be traced to prehistoric times by the discovery of varying sizes and shapes of wooden planks. Ski fragments discovered in Russia have been carbon dated back to 8000 to 7000 BC. It is virtually certain that a form of skiing has been an integral part of life in colder countries for thousands of years. The sport we call ski racing today has evolved to one where tactical decisions are key, as well as technical perfection. Times are measured down to a hundredth of a second, and it is necessary to maintain momentum down the whole course to get down the fastest time possible. Precision is everything. Training off of the hill is fundamental in maintaining strength, cardio, agility, and injury prevention. This allows alpine racers to stay in the best shape imaginable in order to achieve exceptional results when it comes to race day. Exercises ranging from back squats to agility drills are used to stay in shape and to dominate on snow. Alpine skiing demands incredible work ethic, as impressive results do not come easy. Dedication is everything. We interviewed alpine skier Elias Popa and asked him questions about what his training schedule is like and how he balances school and skiing at the same time. What's an average training day for you like? I get up at around 6, head over to the hill, I get all my stuff on by 9, I'm, I'm on snow, did in about 10 laps, all pretty high intensity. I go back in for lunch on occasion, I'll, we'll come back out if the training session seems good enough. Then we'll do a few more laps, and then we'll just head back home, dry land in the evening. It's a pretty jam-packed schedule, it's hard to fit in all my homework. How many days of school do you miss a week normally during ski season? I miss around three a week, or two a week. Usually I'll have a race though, so I'll just miss the entire week. What was your first major injury? My first major injury was a uh, bruised kidney. And how did you come back from that? I, I came back from that by going through a lot of physio and stretching and just a ton of different things to get back from it. And uh, how many other injuries have you had since then? I've torn my ACL, broken my leg, and I've had a concussion. How long is the recovery for an ACL tear? Uh, six to nine months. Would you say it affects you mentally now if you were to ski race? It does affect a lot mentally because you gotta get back into it and mess with the mind a lot because you don't want to get injured again and go through all that again. Of the four major disciplines in alpine ski racing, slalom has the smallest, most intricate and precise turns. You need very fast rhythm and really good agility, as well as good joints and a good back. This discipline is usually the most demanding on the body. Giant slalom, or GS, involves skiing between sets of gates spaced at a greater distance to each other than slalom, but also less than super G. Giant slalom and slalom make up the technical events in alpine skiing, although GS has a greater speed reach than slalom does. Supergiant Slalom, or Super G, is regarded as one of the speed events in alpine skiing. The gates are spaced farther apart, allowing the racer to reach higher speeds than they would in the technical events of GS and Slalom. As well as this, the racer's skis are longer, creating a stable platform for them to go faster. The fourth event out of the four main disciplines in alpine skiing is downhill racing. This event deems the greatest risk of the athlete as the gates are spaced farther apart than Super G even. 
High speeds of over 100 km an hour are reached on an average, and it's important to maintain determined, focused, and courageous throughout the whole run to get down successfully. Alpine skiing is one of the most costly sports out there, with lift tickets, dry land, coaching, accommodation, and equipment, the total cost comes to around $15,000 a season. There aren't very many sports out there where elite competition costs $15,000. Although ski racing appears as strictly a physical sport, a racer's mental game has to be equally as strong as their physical game, if not stronger. Going into each run with a negative mindset or not knowing tactically what you're going to do can cause you to mess up or fall, wrecking your chances for that day's medal. A common technique used by alpine racers to strengthen their mental game before each run is visualization. After a course inspection, competitors will get to the bottom, close their eyes, and go step by step through the hard sections of the course and build confidence and determination in order to lay down a successful run. And when this happens and everything comes together, success is the only option for the competitor.